There is something connect us together. Every day, we see this beautiful island, and it is an inspiration. But every artist has to find their own way to speak about it. With little stuff, a little giggles, and a small camera, my aim is to find those whose eyes appreciate beauty. The night surrounded by delightful poetry and stories of people who create from their heart. I committed um, to painting full time last year. Mm -hmm. And since then I've been in the studio every day working um, mm -hmm. and developing the work really. Spent needed to spend a year developing the work mm -hmm. and pushing myself forward and experimenting. Learning a lot um, and just seeing what I can do. Um, so this is my life and I love it. <laughs> it is lovely. <laughs> um, I love the quiet here. Mm -hmm. I love being in a quiet space, um, just feeling free to express myself and to be who I am, to be very real with the work. I'm a metal sculpture artist, um, I'm uh, self-taught, uh, originally before I came to the island uh, I was a muralist so I, I created murals on, on uh, walls um, in, in restaurants and shops. Um, but I was always uh, fascinated with um, metal sculpture and I decided to uh, try it on my own and, um, and here I am today, uh, still sculpting. For me personally, it's fantasy mixed with reality. So what I really do is observe the nature and try to find myself between the fantasy and the nature. Mm -hmm. This is my, my art because after a long time, sometimes still I don't know exactly how they say, they say describe it as myself because mm -hmm. all the time can, can change it. Yes, so yes, for me it's fantasy. Like basically. grow with you. Like yes, exactly. I've seen when I put them on the wall, they look different to each other, and it confuses myself. It's like I haven't found my style, but I assume there is something that links them together, and that's me. And uh, all I can say when I look at them is that no one else could have done this, really. Mm -hmm. It has to be my work, yeah. so that's the common thing, then, whatever it is. But it's a slightly different technique, and. I don't know why, they become what they become. Um, maybe I will have periods or get stuck in the pattern at some point, but so far, no. Every painting is a new painting. So I'm looking for something, it's more like a journey, I guess. Yeah, hello, I'm Margit, I'm from Germany. But when I dance, I'm Madhavi, and that is a very long journey from Europe to India to Asia and uh, it all started many years ago. Um, I was always interested in, in theatre. My first journey to Asia, that was to Southeast Asia, I was completely fascinated by this incredible culture and there's a lot of dance, dance theatre which is very beautiful. It is actually not only dance, it is like theatre also because it it's storytelling, it is, uh, yeah, it's music, it's acting, it's mime, and also pure dance. So I thought this is just incredibly fascinating. And when I came to the Temple of Fine Arts in Kuala Lumpur, to the Indian Cultural Center, I was really fascinated and completely knocked out. It had such a power, something so fundamentally powerful and beautiful and I had no idea, I didn't understand what they were doing, I don't know about the Indian mythology and I started and slowly slowly got so involved that I really decided to go for a full-time course to India. 
Thomas and I, we are the owners, we are the curators, we are the ones who prepare every single detail, we are the cleaners, we are the, the marketing people, we, are the, we do everything Thomas and I. We want to present contemporary art, uh, provocative art, ironic art, critical art, non-traditional, non-conventional, uh, nothing that confirms any identity that already exists. So, as I told you before, what is tradition? The last thing we remember. Yeah. So, let's create, as you said, a new memory, let's invent a new future, let's discover new uh, horizons, and that's the aim of this gallery, to present this type of art. Art that uh, had a provocative, ironic, that has an idea, a concept behind it. So it's not really to reproduce a landscape, maybe, it's to, to be, uh, as you can see, uh, inspiring. Yes, inspiring, if you want. So this is the, the idea of this gallery. That started like like a game. I was going traveling uh -huh. and I was like 18 and I didn't have a lot of money in my pocket and I met a girl and just met speaking in the station and she saw some my sketchbook and she told me oh you should find a big piece of paper and put it on the floor and just drawing you buy a small piece of box of oh, chocolate yeah, just drawing a little bit more and just people yes uh -huh. similar yeah. and maybe some people can give you some money and I thought why on the paper I should do it on the street directly on the floor then I started and okay in the beginning it was funny because I was using the wrong jokes <laughs> uh -huh. but then I combination I started to meet other people that they was doing that one in the year past and they gave me a lot of nice suggestions so, so which one actually you like? You enjoy the mo mo most? When I draw in the street, I when really like it. Mm -hmm. I like it because you you are there in the middle of a lot of people, mm -hmm. but they are like they are not there. Mm -hmm. And the floor, the chalks is a really nice medium. Mm -hmm. I really like them. Yes, mm -hmm. it makes me feel free even if I copy a subject. Because in the end, I change the background, yeah, or, yeah. or yeah. I have adapt. I have to adapt the picture to the floor yeah, that yeah. I'm using that day. Mm -hmm. And so you never know then if it's rain, if it's too hot, if you will meet nice people or bad people, or some new opportunity in life, like sometimes happening. You no, know, you get commission, or they invite you to take part in a big event. It's is a way to promote yourself mm -hmm. and. It's like every day you have your little exhibition. There are so many wonderful moments. I mean, if you talk about the classical, of course, it was my Aranghetra, my first solo evenings performance. You know, that was just an amazing day. You know, after all these years of learning and then you can present it and, and with my teacher and the musicians <laughs> and, and the audience in India. And it, it was just amazing. But also, of course, when you do contemporary or your own work, when you, when suddenly you you feel that ideas come together and yes. you, you you get an, a, a vision, a picture, how you could do this on stage, how you could put it out, yes. because idea and stories is one thing, but how to do it? That is always the the point when you see, oh my God, yeah, that that's how I could start. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And about. Uh, you know, I did many different, various different projects over the years. I mean, I also did one, for example, that was in collaboration with a, a, a German actor and a musician and also professor for theatre. So we, we compared, for example, Greek and Indian mythology yeah, in, in a performance, which also included dance and theatre and music. Um, of course, one of my very, very, you know, uh, very loved 
projects was about the Saptamatrika, which is about goddesses, about the sacred feminine. Um, yeah, there are many things, you know, which, which I did and hope to do. So I'm inspired on a daily basis to, to create something, I hope, of the beauty around me. Mm -hmm. So when I paint, it's with the hope and the aim of transmitting some of that beauty into, into the work through colour, through the play of light. Mm -hmm. um, um, yes, yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful way to live. I feel very blessed. I find that a big piece of work is very inspiring. It's, you know, um, people are drawn to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with something small like this, I mean, yeah, they're nice and everything, but with something very large, uh, it demands attention, and um, and you can uh, you can put a lot of detail. To me, it, uh, I don't like to do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. um, so every piece is unique. Yeah, that's it, like. Annoying when you do it twice. I yeah. <laughs> Repetition isn't yeah. uh, isn't my thing. No, I I don't yeah. like that. No, and and, and uh, you know, I mean, people who uh, appreciate and buy my work, um, they can take comfort in the fact that when they do buy a piece from me, it it, it is the only one of its kind. You know, and and uh, I I. You know, I don't like to do the same thing over and over again. So that is, to me, what what art is about. It's about trying new things and constantly changing. And, and uh, you know, it, it can't always be the same thing. You have to, you know, flow with the times. It, you know what I mean? It should reflect the, the world we live in. And whatever I create, I learn from the last creation. and. And often I will apply it to the next one. What is the best? Okay, I will tell you what is my best experience. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, in this street, uh, there's a little boy, mm -hmm. maybe he's six years old, something like that, and he's a regular visitor of the gallery. Oh. So every time I open in the afternoon or whatever, he comes and he judges the exhibition. So he comes and tells me, well done, I like Thomas, uh, he, he's the critic. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, uh, for example, uh, one time I had a book uh, there with a face, uh, a bit like a cartoon face, and he told me, this is very ugly, put it down. <laughs> so I obey him because I trust him. Yeah. And uh, what I say is that as experience, is because this is how I want the art buyers. I want the art buyers to come here and say, I like this, I want this. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes I have the feeling that um, maybe some people is waiting for some type of blessing. That this exhibition is created by, or this exhibition uh, is blessed by, so first uh, it's like they read the book and say, okay, well, this is good, then it's good. But uh, so they do like that, uh, they say it's good, put me two of them, yes. without even looking at that. Now listen to me. Exactly. And that I find very, very sad, because uh, you should look at that mm -hmm. and then decide for yourself if it's good or not. For the reason I like the boy, because he's doing the correct uh, process to approach art. Uh, it talks to me, I like it, or I dislike it, it's very ugly. So mm, this type is uh, what I like. For the reason I say it's the best experience. That's a good question. Perfection, yes, in one way. Not technical, it's not interesting for me at all. Or to fulfill the expectations or anything like that. It's more um, to come more true. I think it was Matisse who said, I saw an interview with Matisse of Paper Cutter, and he felt when he, all his years when he was painting and doing his oils or whatever, uh, he, he felt a bit like he was stuck in something. Mm -hmm. And, and when he, it was when he pulled out the scissors and he started to create the paper, he, he 
became free. He felt he came free and true to himself. He found his way of expressing. And maybe it's something like that. The perfection is to be true as an artist. I work with in two different ways, I would say. Mostly. But, but mainly the extreme differences is that sometimes a picture, especially when we are talking painting, it comes first. I see it already done. And often that comes in dreams just before waking up, for example. I can wake up, or in the middle of the night, I wake up and I have a picture. Not, not so long ago, I had this picture of an ear. It was a strange ear with a golden kind of frame or whatever, and bluish, and it was just the ear. And, and I saw it, and I woke up, and it was still there in my eye, and I felt, okay, I have to do that. And then I did. So, I don't know where it came from, and then afterwards, oh, what is this? It's ridiculous to paint an ear. Why did I do that? And then, of course, I associated it to Van Gogh, to cut off his yeah. Yeah. So the painting was named Vincent. And there the idea, so to say, comes into it afterwards. But it started with just the, the image I saw in my dream. And other times I put a white canvas without knowing where I'm going. And I just start operating. And, and then I start to see something and it grows to put it simple, I think when I create, I own the art and no one else has any right to it or to comment on it even. I mean, it's my process, my journey, mm -hmm. and it's in my hands completely. When it's done, it's not longer anymore mine. It's not mine anymore. Yes, public? Yes. And it's the interpretation of other people, the viewer of the painting or whatever, the one who sees it or owns it, buys it, whatever, who, uh, what is important, creates, that process is mine and only mine. So the journey is yours, but the, the end is, it's public. Yes, I think so. Art, art belongs to the world. Mm -hmm. It has to be. And then if the world doesn't want it, I mean, then it will... It's compost. <laughs> it's compost. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a background of using different uh, mediums, pastels, acrylic and oil, mm -hmm. and just pencil. Um, but over the years, um, my love of colour really has brought me to work solely in oils because of the lustre and the richness mm -hmm. and the slight sheen of the, of the paint itself. Um, so again, it's been a development over time of learning about myself and what I want to produce um, mm -hmm. and experimenting. Um, and now using cold wax medium with the oil enables me to build up layers Mm -hmm. to work into the layers to create a lot of texture, um, to create transparency and to work with all of these. Um, but I always come back to the fact that I love the colour and I want the colour to sing. Mm -hmm. So I want the colour to sing its own song. Mm -hmm. um, for me the colour is almost everything. I would like to now incorporate all the knowledge and experiences I have accumulated over the years in various artistic fields through my studies and my practical work. So actually I become more like a dancer, actor, performer now. Uh, yes, which means of course dance movements, acting, abhinaya, mime as expressional storytelling. Uh, and also <clears throat> that it has something to do with the performance art of the West. 
So it in this sense I saw I have a lot of freedom mm -hmm. to to really create mm -hmm. my own ideas, which I really also like when I have a topic which really interests me. I like to study, research and go deep into it and then slowly suddenly there will be an idea or vision coming up how how to now put this out, how to do the artistic realization of this idea. So I like to work a lot on a certain topic or contents. So to and then how to portray it. So I can you give you an example which was also, you know, one of my recent works is the zero to ten. It's about uh, yeah, science and art, mathematics and dance. And I created and choreographed this for for the Science in the City Festival in Valletta 2018. And then I did it just recently in the for Science in the Citadel Festival in Gozo. And I apply it for Science in the Trieste for next year with this project. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it, it works. It's a big mm -hmm. European yeah. uh, scientific uh, festival. Good plan, good plan. <laughs> so, well, it is about this kind of abstract theme and now how to try to also bring the deeper meaning of you know it's, it's much vaster numbers and geometrical forms are everywhere in this world and that means they are like a skeleton of our being and it is so interesting how when you also show like I did in this piece in the projection the symbols of old cultures how they already understood the meaning and I project it and then I move with it and try to, to bring out the meaning of these numbers which, you know, constitute our world. Yeah. So, me, what I really believe is to do quality job and very professional. And I think that the marketing from after that. So first, let us do a very good job and then let people come here and um, that we have attention from the press, from radios, television, but first let's present an excellent product and that's what we are focusing on that moment. Yeah, it's a bit remind me of the writing on the outside of the window, like the, like you just need the quality and the art will find you. Exactly, <laughs> that's it. let us find you, it's like our slogan. Yeah. And it's what we really believe also what you were saying about the marketing. Anyone, let us find you, yeah. with you, 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 anyone. Yeah. So yes, this is the, the idea. Well, um, there's two things about this. Um, a lot of the material that you'll find uh, in the uh, garbage disposal uh, site, the civic anemone site, um, you can't take it out. It's, it's already sold to a third party. They don't allow anyone to, to, to take the metal out. So, so in a lot of ways, I'm forced to, um, to find material uh, through mechanic shops ah, when they when they so throw directly to the people. Yes, but um, for example, pieces like like those there, these are all store bought. Like you won't find material like that in in the uh, in the garbage. People just yeah. don't throw it out. But the the things that people likely throw away are the most useful, and they are also very difficult to incorporate in into a sculpture because. Um, you know, you're having to basically uh, take pieces that don't belong together. Yeah, they're very random. I can yes. imagine how it's going to be so difficult. I mean, like, you can't really... This is need to be size. It's not like a clay <laughs> that you can, like, take. No. <laughs> make sure the size. It's, it's all, uh, it's all uh, a, 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 you know, predetermined size and shape. Um, but the skill is in having to make it work with the next piece, with the next piece, and getting a, an overall sense of how it's going to appear when it's done, and and that is part of the the process in which I use. I've already envisioned what it's going to look like before I even start, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then it's a slow process to try and make that happen, and then there's always little tweaks on the way or I have to cut this end off, cut that end off, maybe reshape that, bend this, you know. Um, but uh, but yeah, the end result is always is always a good one. Uh, you know, 
I like to see my work when it's done. If there's there's a, a huge sense of satisfaction when it's finished, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, I would like to to have it all going. <laughs> so sometimes I really, do. I mean, I love the traditional, the classical Bharatanatyam has such a power and such a beauty. So yes, I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. And I also love the Bollywood because you know it's it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I also mostly incorporate classical movements and hand gesture learning. So you know that it it gets really style and beauty. But of course, I want to create more contemporary, cross-cultural, interdisciplinary projects. And my vision is, yeah, at the moment, I'm just trying to, to explore where would I go, which, which topic should I choose. And my wish also would be to uh, have more collaboration, collaborating with uh, artists from different disciplines. Yeah. You know, to, that would be really interesting mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, maybe even, you know, from different cultures, internationally, whatever, you know, so yeah, that, that would be, I think, I'm in that process mm -hmm. of, you know, thinking there's so much what we could do, yeah. but maybe not always solo and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe also solo, I don't know. It's, it, actually, I'm in that process of, of uh, Coming, exploring, exploring. This. exploring. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. In nature, you know, well, animals. Uh, well, they they do say one of the hardest um, animal forms uh, to create is the horse, and mm -hmm. I tackled that right away. It was my fifth sculpture. Mm -hmm. Was a was a horse, and um, and it was very close to being life-sized um, you know the the uh, another one would be the uh, the human form um, I think that's something I want to focus on a little bit more is the, the, the human form um, but also uh, I do kind of want to take uh, something to a, a next generation a, a different level um, you know a lot of my sculptures have a kinetic uh, movement to them, uh, or some of them incorporate lights. Uh, you know, they have moving parts. Um, so I want to incorporate all these elements, mm -hmm. and maybe even a step further, yeah. uh, into something that I've never attempted before, and or a type of form that I've never attempted before. And I think. Um, so there's a there's a natural evolution or, or progression to my work, and um, uh, yeah, I think I think that's the direction I want to go. But I still like doing the animals because the animals are uh, such a great subject, mm -hmm. you know, or the human form. Um, but I'm not limited. Uh, I'm open to anything really. As a future plan is to become a center of culture. Yeah. So. For example, like this last weekend, we had this experimental filming. Mm -hmm. It was an open night, so it was not a commercial night because we were selling nothing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we gave a space to people to present uh, their creations. So in videos, in music, in composing. So it will be excellent if this can become a center of culture. And now I'm planning for uh, probably next month to start uh, philosophical talks here, so maybe once a month to, together with philosophy sharing, settle the talks here. So to have a space of discussion, to have a space of critic, and this I think it, it can be excellent. It's an open center, free to study together, to yes. research together, yeah. so this is the idea. Yeah. Then we also have a little library, so people, this is not for sale actually, People can sit here and read. Ah, yes, so it happens sometimes. Some people take one of these books, sit 
here and read. So um, this is the idea. So if like let's say art piece of people, you know, want to approach and want to make an exhibition here, what they need to do is just give you a proper shot of the work. Yes, just like that. Mm -hmm. So they they show me their job, uh, mm -hmm. their work, and then we decide if mm -hmm. it uh, goes or not. Yeah. So anyone can come here. Uh, mm -hmm. We welcome everyone. It's again, it's the the journey of adventure with every painting and you're never sure where it's going to end up but of course I bring myself to every painting mm -hmm. so um, it's not only the, the colour singing but it's sort of my soul speaking mm -hmm. so often the, the paintings are they feel like we bring so much of ourselves and our feelings and our feeling life into the paintings. So what project you work on right now? What what you mm. what in the future you was like mm. you know you might have an exhibition? Mm -hmm. like. Yes. Well I've learnt that if we think too much about the exhibition mm. uh, one tends to become a little out of oneself with the work and it becomes a bit out of focus so I prefer to think about the exhibition after I've finished a body of work. Okay. Um, so I've spent the last 13 months working on a body of work, mm -hmm. uh, now that comprises 13 paintings, some on canvas, some on board, yes. all the fairly this, this sort of size. Mm -hmm. um, so now I have this body of work, so now I can think of um, making them public, <laughs> if you like. Okay. Uh -huh. But for me, the private has to come first. Yes, yes. Um, so whether people decide to buy them or not, mm -hmm. it sort of becomes irrelevant. Yes, yes. Um, because the process and the work were everything to me mm -hmm. um, at that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they move on too, but um, it, that's nothing to do with me anymore, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, the, uh, the few artists that that do inspire me, um, starting with those, I guess. H.R. Uh, Geiger is a, mm -hmm. is a big one. He's uh, the uh, creator of the uh, Alien from from the movie Alien and Aliens. Ah, okay. um, but if you ever looked at his work, it's it's very very ahead of its time, and uh, I think his work is absolutely brilliant. I mean, uh, some people will find it a bit macabre but I, I quite like his work and, and it and it, uh, it has a good tie with what I do. I remember <laughs> I remember when uh, when in Canada uh, what really inspired me to, to, to start with this was um, there was a gallery uh, in downtown Toronto uh, mm -hmm. and there was a, a horse and a, a, a cow sculpture and they were life-sized and I was so inspired by it and they were made of uh, aluminum pots and pans and they were all welded together and, and I, you know and day after day I kept going back into that gallery and I uh, got on a first name basis with uh, the curator from the gallery mm -hmm. and you know eventually they you know uh, they see me at the door and I, oh, back again <laughs> I'm like yeah yeah I, I just want to look at it again Yes, it was always Richard Dagercorn mm -hmm. and his Ocean Park series. Okay. Um, he's recently died, but um, I followed him through most of his life mm -hmm. since I was young, since I was in my 20s at college and discovered his work. Him mm -hmm. and, as I said, the other Are they like artists like him. And that in your work of art a lot, or it's... Is it they, they, they in, in your color, like, or something like that? Um, not, no, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, no. It's simply giving me the courage, I think, okay. to uh, continue to paint. Uh -huh. We have so much beauty around us here in Gozo, so breathe it in. <laughs> Whether it's the light or the colour, when we breathe it in, I think that's the meaning of the word inspiration, to inspire to breathe in. And then the, the hope is that somehow it translates onto, into the work and onto the canvas. Okay. Through our own feelings also. Mm -hmm. So it's always about the looking first. So I'm always looking. I'm always gazing at the sea, at the colours, at the rocks beneath the sea and taking photographs and, and collecting these memories and images as a storehouse within me so that it's a day-to-day-to-day -day expression of life. And also like every kid, I watch in cartoon and I like fantasy from the beginning. And so I always do it. But it was a particular moment that I felt in love with art because mm -hmm. I have to move from one city to another one with my family. A nice moment that I always I will remember for sure in my life is when I met my boyfriend, Ungeri. He is really creative. He's not an artist, but he doesn't like, he, he doesn't know how to draw. But he is really creative person, really like recycle and invent things. He did installation to use in a club when mm -hmm. I was doing parties. So introduced in my in my heart new things, new mm -hmm. medium, new yes, material, yes. UV light, <laughs> fluorescent yes. color. And now that he is not create anymore with me, mm -hmm. they are still with me these things, and okay. he always support me in this. So that's why. Also, the name of the studio is Disconnect Creation. So he's kind of like inspiring you too. Yes, a lot. And he's really also a critic. While I drew, there was something uh -huh. I asked him, suggested, what do you think? Oh, here is not perfect, you should make it like this. Or, for example, he has, he's not cre creating anymore with me because he's busy with his things. Mm -hmm. But always he told me, you should try on this tomorrow, or you should do this to make yeah. it come nice. Well, it, and it's always support me, even when he noticed that something is not going exactly like I want. He's the kind of thing, no, oh, don't give up, it's nice as well, don't stress. Well, you know, when you grow up, what you have around you is what you take for granted. Yeah. So for me, I took it for granted that you paint. I mean, it's just a natural thing to do, it's nothing I... I felt came to me later in life or anything. It's just something I did as a child and I did all through my life. Working with, from, you know, because when it's around you, you have a father working with it. Okay. It's, like, it's a natural thing, like cooking. It's just something, it belongs to life, that you work with art. And uh, then I have been in advertising since I was young. Uh, and you work Yes, with advertising, mm -hmm. and it makes you, you, I mean, you work always with, with an element of art in, mm -hmm. in advertising, yes, especially yes. it was like that before, I, now I it's a bit... The, um, and it's a way to communicate, you know, you reach slightly deeper. Um, yeah. Unfortunately with advertising it, it took the turn thanks to the buyers of art rather than anything else. I think that it's simple messages today. Buy two, get one for free or blah yeah, blah blah. And it's, it's always this offer, offer, offer. Uh, a lot of money, argumentation. But the kind of advertising I was producing and making, especially the first 10 years, was uh, slightly deeper. You create an image and you create a, a, a you build up brands. And no, you reach deeper into people's minds, so to say. You are more of a devil. You manipulate really. And I think that training, practice, working for for big companies and their products. I mean, the mod, the leaders of the markets. And, and uh, how how you reach it and communicate with 
often and uh, how how you reach it communicates with reaching unconscious layers it's it's always interested me but it, but it also killed me because it's a uh, it's painful to to sell your soul like that it's like selling your soul to the devil and of course when you're in this business it's very time consuming you work many hours uh, so wait uh you talk about advertising. Advertising, yes, yes. No, no. But I, I think it's an important part of me as an artist, is because it's, it's, um, it's, it told me a lot of how to communicate, how to express, and how it's possible, and how people react on different things. You know, like, like how sweet it is with a dog, and then <laughs> if you kill that dog. How upsetting it is for people, etc. I mean, you learn really how you get reactions, and and then it becomes a bit boring for me with just beauty. My aim, I think, is to to reach that point while I'm awake. So I, I like to work a bit fast with my ideas. Then it might take a long time to fulfill it, you know, technically and so and so on. But I want the idea to to be it to come from some subconscious. Uh, from you, like yeah, from some inner inner yeah. self, and, and you know when that happened because it's not always happened. But when it happens, the feeling I get is that it comes not even from myself. Yes, it involves also the audience. It involves everybody who is in the process of helping. You know, that means the technicians and and the the, the places, the you know, the theaters. But it of course involves a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. who, who help you on the way and of course my teachers and yeah and of course last not least my lovely wife Nina who is a photographer <laughs> and uh, who of course supports what I'm doing. I'm so grateful that I you know I came across this art form at all you know which shaped my life which started this incredible journey with all this opportunities, experiences and developments which would not have happened in this way otherwise. Mm -hmm. Thank you and Namaste. Here they are. The short compilation interview is part of the beginning of my journey through creating documentary. With hope to bring more curiosity to the artists and their art and also get to know art patterns on this island, how they keep it alive. I want to find more stories to share, open more opportunities for them to collab and support each other. Thank you for watching. Keep in touch with me and the artists by checking in the video interview on my channel. See you again there and ciao!